Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I am, as always, happy to be with you on this Tuesday for yet another author interview. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. If it wasn't wonderful, I hope it was at least better than mine. Um, I have had a migraine off and on for the last two weeks or so, and starting on Friday, it was pretty much constant until yesterday when I finally broke down and and had my husband take me to the doctor so I could get some treatment. It's thankfully much, much better today, but um, it's been a long couple of weeks, and yeah, uh, if you have had migraines and you understand, if you haven't had migraines, just be very happy. Um because they're really no fun, and I do not like them, which is probably an understatement. Uh, the one bright spot in my migraine-fueled weekend was speaking with today's author, Brandy Ferner. I had such a fun conversation with her, and I had such fun reading her book, so I hope that you will enjoy the conversation as much as I did. Her book is called Adult Conversation. It's a novel about uh, motherhood, about parenthood, but mostly about, in this case, motherhood, or um, it, it could be parenthood in the in the sense of whichever parent stays at home. In, the, in this case, it's April, the main character, who is a mom, but it's going to have themes that will resonate with parents of all kinds. Uh, the description of the book is as follows. April is a thoughtful yet sarcastic mother of two who tries her best to be a caring, connected mom in a middle-class culture where motherhood has become relentless. April rages at modern, modern motherhood's impossible pressures, her husband's dad privilege, and her kids' incessant snack requests. She wants to enjoy motherhood, but her idealist vision and lived experience are in constant conflict with one another. Is she broken? Or is motherhood? Desperate for an answer, she seeks out a therapist and lands with an unexpected woman whose validation and wisdom gives April the clarity to reclaim herself and even start designing clothes, her pre-motherhood passion. But when the ever-elusive babysitter cancels last minute, April finds herself back at square one. She seeks guidance, but her therapist is now dealing with her own crumbling marriage, and instead of counseling April, she convinces her to speed off to Las Vegas with her to help her, to help catch her cheating, excuse me, to help catch her husband cheating. With a little weed, alcohol, and topless pool hopping, plus a male stripper and some much needed autonomy, the two find lost pieces of themselves that motherhood swallowed up. But neither one is prepared for how tested and tempted they will be, or for the life-altering choices their journey will force them to guide, to make, excuse me, geez, who is guiding whom anymore? That is the description of Fumbled Through by me, but uh, the description of Adult Conversation by Brandy Ferner. Maybe you recognized yourself a little bit in there. Maybe not the, you know, Thelma and Louise style road trip to Vegas with the, the weed and the alcohol and the topless pool, but hey, if you did, I'm not here to judge, uh, that you could have been like, yeah, that was last weekend. Um, sounds more interesting than my last weekend. <laughs> so this book is heartwarming. It's hilarious. It's heartbreaking at times when you uh, walk with April through this, this journey of motherhood where she is trying to be a good mother, but she feels like she's failing constantly. She feels like she is constantly on the edge of losing her grip on everything that, you know, she's just constantly failing as a mother and a wife and she just doesn't 
but she just wants to be left alone and not touched. Please, she's just just let her be left alone for five minutes. It's definitely um, a, a kind of darkly lighthearted, if that makes sense, take on modern motherhood. And it's, it's a lot of fun to read, but it really will also make you think and um, maybe – Maybe it will speak to you because you are also in a place where motherhood is, especially right now if you're at home and you've been at home for the last couple of months trying to parent and uh, teach and work from home or whatever it may be where you're all trapped in the same house and parenting has become a whole new and different adventure. So you may want to pick this book up and um, just escape into somebody else's trials of motherhood for a while. Let's go ahead and uh, turn now to the interview with Brandy so she can tell you more about her inspiration for the book and her own experiences with motherhood. So uh, again, this is uh, Adult Conversation by Brandy Ferner. This call is being recorded. Hi, Brandy. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, thank you for having me, Sarah. I am excited to have you here to talk about your hilarious book. It's called Adult <laughs> Conversation. Before we get to the book, though, if you could share a bit about yourself, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm a wife and a mother of two um, and I'm author, also an author and a podcaster. And I love honesty, humor, and real talk, which is what my podcast and my book and my writing is always about. And I honestly believe that a well-timed conversation can literally change your life. I know through conversation, I've had aha moments and known what to do and got clarity. I mean, I know that that's like a, a common experience. It's not like I'm telling everybody like, hey, everybody, conversation can change your life. But I really, because I value that so much, that is what motivates me to do my work. So I was also a childbirth educator and birth doula for 10 years, which gave me a really intimate look at the process of becoming a mother, aside from my own experiences, which inform my work. So yeah, I'm all about moms, validating them, hopefully making them laugh, highlighting the inequalities and injustices of modern motherhood, reminding them that they have value in the world, and basically helping them know that they're not alone by saying the things out loud that other moms won't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have so many comments on all of that, <laughs> uh, but I, I know I know that they'll, they'll come up as we chat. Um, so I was laughing out loud from the first, I mean, from the first Aww. two paragraphs where you are under C, well, not you, April is under C. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, actually, I read the, those those paragraphs to my mom, and she <laughs> did daycare for a very long time. And oh. <laughs> at one point in her life, she had upwards of six two-year-olds. <laughs> Oh my gosh. She said, she said, you should ask her if she's ever had six banging on the door while she's trying to go to the bathroom. No, I would never put myself in a position where there would be six two year olds. <laughs> She would she would put the baby gate up between the living room and the kitchen so she could cook lunch and they would whatever number she had that day they'd all just stand at the gate and cry while she made lunch. Oh my god, that sounds honestly like torture. That's like farm animals. <laughs> I know. I know. This is so, um, uh, on that note, can you give an overview of adult conversation? Yes. So the book is, it's a darkly comedic story about the relentlessness of modern motherhood, where the main character, April, seeks an answer to the question, is motherhood broken or am I broken? So after a series of mom wins and failures that I think are quite relatable, especially right now when we're stuck with everyone, April and her therapist end up on a Thelma and Louise style road trip to Vegas, where they are tempted and tested while finding lost pieces of themselves that motherhood swallowed up. And also Snoop Dogg is one of their neighbors. So yeah, it's a quirky, humorous <laughs> read that's hopefully as quirky as I am, but it really, and I, I don't know if you felt this, but it also has this heart to it. So I don't feel like it's just this throwaway humor book and, and, you know, not that anybody has insinuated that it is, but, um, I, I really, I was really important to me to blend the two things like conversation that could possibly change your life or help help moms off of a hook that they're on and also laughing at kind of maybe inappropriate and also really edgy kind of stuff. So that was, that was, that's kind of me in a nutshell, honestly. 
And now I want to make a totally dumb dad joke about Brandy in a, trapped in a in a in a nutshell, uh, stuck in a nutshell. I don't know. I, I'm tired. Um, instead of making a bad dad joke, let's just go to commercial, shall we? When we come back, more with Brandy Ferner about her new novel, Adult Conversation. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review podcast, and I'll be right back. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness. Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking with author Brandy Ferner about her new novel, Adult Conversation. And you, you really capture the motherhood is so complicated anymore. Uh, I mean, it's always been it's always been difficult, yeah. but the comparisons and you know social media, I don't think has helped. In some ways, it has because you get yeah. support groups, in, but those support groups can be incredibly catty and mean. Yes. Um, and you don't you don't delve a lot into that, but um, April is constantly comparing herself to her friends, and and then there's a mm-hmm. conversation where one of her friends says, "No, you're amazing at this. You're so much better at it than I am." And I feel like you you captured that so well that mm. that am I doing enough? Am I, you know, am I, am I are my kids going to need therapy in the future because they screwed exactly. up their childhood? Exactly, and we're all always I think thinking about that, and some of us you know, we're on different spectrums of it, but isn't it funny when you feel like you're falling apart and then a friend says to you like, man, you're always so good at something. And you're like, are you kidding me? The inner experience of this and my outer mask of it are two different things. And that was one of the themes I really wanted to explore is that tension that we have as moms and especially wanting to be thoughtful moms, that sometimes what we're saying and what we're thinking are two different things. And it's exhausting to live in a mind that, you know, when a kid bludgeons you with a Thomas train, you want to lose it. And you want to say like, you're never playing Thomas trains again. That's like maybe the the instinct is the frustration, but then you find a way to nicely tell them we don't do that. And so you have this constant tension of what I want to say and what I am saying are two different things. And that's, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's just, it's relentless because Mm -hmm. you can't just 
leave for an hour with your kids by themselves. <laughs> I mean, right, yeah, right well, now. You could, but um. well, yes, and right now, especially, I didn't mean to write the perfect pandemic read, and you know, and not to say that it's it's yeah. perfect for it, but my goodness, has there ever been a time where parents and, and moms, especially of all kinds, working moms, stay at home moms feel the burn of constant caretaking more than this moment right now? I don't think so. And so it really has opened me up and my book up to a group of people who I think would have gotten it and would have found something in it that was relatable because I think it's for all moms and even people who aren't moms and even dads to get intel. But right now specifically, I had a reader message me out of the blue and say, I'm a working mom and I read your book and it, I was in the perfect headspace for it because I realized that without my daughter's school and without the nannies and things that I have set in place, I'm not the mom I thought I was when I have to be doing it all. And so that I feel like there's something there right now that's specific that people can really relate to really having to sit and look at what kind of mom am I when it's day in and day out. Absolutely. And um, I keep seeing memes on Facebook since we've all been in isolation saying <laughs> never again will someone ask what a stay at home mom does mm. all day. And there's yeah, there's some truth to that. But I think after we go back to, quote unquote, normal life, the, that that will be forgotten. But you highlight yes. that inequality as well, you know, from the, the working parent compared to the stay at home parent and what that, you know, how in this case, it's the dad and he, his life continues pretty much as normal after children. <laughs> he goes right. to work, he comes home, he goes surfing. Yep. That's right. Yes. And you, what you say about this, this meme, I felt the same way when I saw it. I said, that's interesting everybody is still going to not value us. This moment is, I mean, and this is bleak, right? I don't mean to be like hopeless for people out there, but I don't think people get it. Like even on the, um, I was walking by my daughter's school the other day and there's a PTA banner that says, we love our teachers. And of course, I'm not trying to downplay teachers. Teachers have had to adapt in such an intense way. And then also I was like thinking like, where's the poster for the parents? That are the, you know, the people doing the teaching. And I really agree with you in that when this goes back, I think people will be so eager to get away from it that they won't stop and think that was really hard when we were in that. And there's moms that are in that all the time. How could we make things easier? What laws could we pass? What kind of universal child care what kind of you know, things can we, can we do to help these moms? I think it will be gone. I think we're already at the low end of the list of priority. And I think that sadly, I think it's going to be pretty fleeting. So my hope and my work is to try to get this out there and not for just moms. My husband and I were having this conversation last night because actually I have a podcast that I did with him interviewing him about all this stuff and about how it feels to be married to somebody who does this work that's coming out on Monday. But we were listening to it last night and we were just sort of talking about how this is not just for moms. Like if, if a mom is happy that affects everybody and that affects a marriage also. So this work is not gender focused specifically on I'm trying to better things for just women or people who identify as mothers. It's for everybody. It's so that dads can also have freedom and, you know, not have to be stuck in a binary role as what dad means. And if they don't want to be the breadwinner, that they can have conversations about not wanting to be the breadwinner. I really want to break away from these roles for everybody involved. This isn't just a pro-mom thing. So would you say that that's kind of your, that was kind of your inspiration or jumping off point for this particular story, just kind of having a, a, an open, honest look at those roles? Well, I, in the end, that's really what this was. But the way that this came about is my youngest was two. And all of a sudden I was standing in the kitchen and I just had this idea of, what what would it be like if two moms went to Vegas and they really could do whatever they wanted? Like, what would they do? Would they do drugs? Would they cheat? Would they just lay alone in a bed and have no one touching them and maybe watch reality TV or get room service? Like, my mind was just like, what would, what I would love to write through different people choosing different things. And then somewhere in that, I thought, well, wouldn't it be really interesting if one of them was the other's therapist? Because I do believe that 
therapy and I've benefited from therapy in my life. So I think therapists are awesome. And I also believe that there's therapy around us in so many different ways. And so I wanted to play with this idea of the switching roles of, of the therapist and the client, which is what happens in the book. They shift roles. And so that to me was like, well, that's an interesting idea. And then, but I thought to myself, I have a two-year-old. I've never written a book. I didn't even, I think I thought of myself as a writer at that point, but definitely not an author. I'm like, there's no way I can do this. And so I think what my brain did is it was like, I know how we'll get her to do this. We'll give her the idea to have Snoop Dogg be one of their neighbors. And then she will have to write this because she will want to write it so bad. So that's what happened. And I, and I said no to it for an entire week. I'm not writing this. I hear you idea. I don't have time for you. Where would I even find time? We don't even have a babysitter. We can't afford really to have a babysitter. And then I didn't sleep for a week straight. And I was up at night writing down character ideas and plot lines and things that I'd experienced, things that I'd heard and seen. And after a week of no sleep, I was like, all right, fine. The only way I'm going to get through this thing and out of it is to write it. And so that's where the idea came from. But little did I know under the surface, I had so much to say. And that's where through this book, I really figured out what my thoughts were about these issues like gender inequality, dad privilege, marriage feeling so tangled after having kids, value, losing ourselves. All of these things were kind of in hindsight that I worked through in the book. We are going to go ahead and take another break. When we come back, we'll be talking more about the writing process and uh, more about what Brandy was just speaking of, of working through certain uh, certain issues, certain situations, certain emotions uh, through the writing of this book. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. You really can't underestimate the importance of having the right creative work for your brand or your product. Whether it's a logo, a website, a book cover, or an ad campaign, you really need a quality design to make that big difference pop and deliver your overall engagement and success in a competitive market. That's where Design Crowd comes in. Design Crowd has over 750,000 designers from Sydney to San Francisco ready to help you with awesome creative ideas. They make crowdsourcing work for you. So if you need a logo or you're working on your creative branding, you can go to designcrowd.com and post a brief describing the design you need. And then within about two to seven days, you'll receive up to over a hundred different designs from designers around the world. Then you pick the best design and approve payment to the designer. So you're only paying for the design that you want. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of freelancing and out of crowdsourcing. And you don't have to be a huge company like Harvard Business School to use Design Crowd, although they have used it as well. You can start a project on Design Crowd for as little as $99. And if you go right now to designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or enter the promo code health and wellness on their website, then our health and wellness listeners will receive up to $150 off of your design project. That's designcrowd.com forward slash health and wellness or entering that promo code health and wellness. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to build that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome 
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Before the break, Brandy was speaking about the process of writing the book and how that process was for her, what she realized during the writing of the pro- of the book, what she maybe realized as a result of writing the book. So let's go ahead and get back to the interview with Brandy. So do you feel like it was a little bit um, cathartic in the writing <laughs> through the process? Oh yeah. I mean that book is is was therapy for me. It was two things. It was therapy for me that I didn't know that I needed. And like I said there was something about, you know, the universe or whatever that was like we know what she needs. Let's let's give her this idea and then make her do it. I definitely needed it. I and and for me I learned I knew it before, but I learned that writing for me is therapeutic. It's a way that I process the world. And writing this book, and it took me, I wrote the first draft. I started in December. I was done in April. And of course, that was like five years ago, and there's been drafts and drafts and drafts of it. So it wasn't like that was done at all. And I've learned and things have changed and all this stuff in, in the process of it. But um, but I, I was working out my own stuff, but I also knew while I was doing that, I was, by me being honest with my stuff, I was hopefully once the readers could read this, giving them the permission to work through their stuff. So it's weird because it's like, it was self-serving at the beginning, but very quickly I saw if I'm going to be honest about this stuff that I think nobody really talks about, that's where I think my book is different from other books is I've read other books by moms. There's a lot of really great ones out there, but I, I always feel like there's something being held back. And we're not really hearing like the full truth of what the experience is because people don't want to feel like they're not a good mom or a good wife or whatever. And in this, I held nothing back. Like there's literally nothing in that book that I was like, oh, I want to write that, but I shouldn't. If I said that to myself in my head, I knew I had to write it. That's what people want to read. They don't want to read the stuff that, you know, is other people are saying. So anyway, that's that was sort of my process of working through it. But yes, that was absolutely cathartic. And then I hoped that by being cathartic for me, it could translate and other people would find it cathartic to read it. Absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit more about April, uh, who's the main character, and it's told from her point of view. Yeah. What about her do you think is going to resonate? I mean, there's so much, but what about her do you think <laughs> will resonate with readers? Oh, man. Um <sighs> Yeah, there is so much. And we touched on it before, I think. But I think one of the things is that, you know, her thoughtfulness under pressure that we have as moms will resonate with readers. You know, we try to do and say the kind, loving thing with our kids, even when we want to scream. And sometimes we do scream and some more than others. But there's always this inner tug of war going on, you know, that we don't really talk about what we want to do or say in the moment and what we do say or do in the moment, they're two different things, like I was saying before. So another example of that is like you're putting your kid to bed at night. You've had a day of constant resistance. You know, you've had a pen, the, the farm animal pen of a child or children while you're trying to go to the, the bathroom and you're exhausted. Or maybe you were trying to put pants on someone who was running away from you. There's so many little little atrocities all day along with the beautiful, joyous stuff. But so then, you know, you're laying in bed, you're like, oh, I'm almost there. I'm at the finish line. And then your kid asks for a sip of water. And then they want to know who your best friend in third grade was. And then, oh, mom, I forgot to feed the fish. And then you're boiling inside, but you don't want to breathe fire into your kid before they fall asleep because you're like, you know, and then, and then for April, which is like how my mind goes, I'm like, oh, wasn't there a Facebook article I read about go before people go to sleep? Like that's where they're the most susceptible and they should go to, kids should go to bed feeling happy and loved because that's, you know, it's like all that stuff that we have we have in our face all the time, you know, like um, we should be having conversations at family dinners and, and kids who do, you know, tend to do better later, all that stuff about what's right and wrong. So anyway, there you are laying in bed, your kid is needling you stalling and you are about to lose it. And so you grit your teeth and still try to be loving and kind. And I mean, sometimes we, we just lose it probably mostly at the end of the day, but you know, the day is filled with moments like this where that inner experience and outer mask look different from each other. And it's exhausting. It takes a lot of work to not just call BS on all the kids stuff that undoes you every day. And, you know, and and that's not even talking about the marriage pieces, you know, and how, how they fit into it. So just sort of that kid stuff. And I, I always joke with friends, we talk about how 
the stuff that you put up with with kids in any other context you would be able to file a restraining order or like take somebody, you know, legal action <laughs> against right. that, but it's your kids. And so you can't, it's like this mistreat, this, this mistreatment that not only are you supposed to handle, but you're supposed to like love. And it's such, it's, it's, it's hard to wrap your head around that sometimes when you've been doing it every day, all day, nonstop for, you know, X amount of years for sure. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's like being in an abusive relationship with <laughs> toddlers are like abusive, uh, drunk Ex little people. I don't know. I mean, yes, that's exactly true. In any other context, the way that you're treated, like, you know, getting hit, slapped in the face. There's that scene in the book where she gets slapped in the face. We've all been there. If you have kids, mm -hmm. you've been slapped in the face in public. And in any other context, people would you know, come to your aid and you could file a restraining order and never have to see that person again. But when it's your kid, of course, they're learning, but it doesn't take away the very human feeling of being slapped. So that's why when it happens to April in the book, I mean, I, I had plenty to draw from here, but it's like, you have this, you have this instinct to want to slap the thing that, that slapped you. It's just this human thing. But then as a mother, it's like your mother brain comes on and is like, do not hit child. You love child will traumatize child. So then it's like your hand, you just feel this, this earthquake inside you. And then you put your hand down, like, wait a minute, I have to actually like parent and care about my child's feelings in this. So that aspect, I don't think we talk about enough because I think people don't want to say that that's hard, but yeah, I definitely talk about it because I think it's very, very real and it's really hard as well. I, I agree. Um, so in terms of what you would like readers to take away from the book is, is that kind of what you're hoping is that they'll be, you know, they'll just recognize it and then maybe themselves be able to name that hard stuff. Mm, yes. Yeah. Naming the hard stuff I think is important. And, you know, I, I wrote this book obviously because the ideas wouldn't let me sleep, but I also wrote it, you know, for these overwhelmed survival mode mothers like I was who don't have the energy or the mental bandwidth to articulate the entanglement that is modern motherhood. So yes, I want this to be I ideally, I want people to read it and go, oh my gosh, that's what that is. I felt that too. That's what that is. I want people to feel seen and I want the readers to know that they are not broken. Like that is my biggest, I think if there's one message I have to get across and that I wanted to get across in this is that, is that if motherhood wasn't what you thought it would be, you are not alone. I mean, there's really no way not no way, but it's it's hard for it to live up to what you think it is because you can't ever have known all that it takes. So that to me is is the biggest takeaway. I want people to read this book and not only laugh and feel seen, but at the end, I want them to to think to themselves, you know what? I I maybe I don't have to keep like fixing myself. Maybe I'm not broken. Maybe this system is broken. Maybe the tanglement that happens after having kids is, is part of the issue and it's not me. So I wanted people to be able to not feel like they were failing so much. And so hopefully April being really honest about what she's feeling lets people off of that hook. We are going to take another break, but when we come back, we will be talking more about writing a book that is so much that is based a lot on your own experience, uh, how you go about writing parts that are bi autobiographical, parts that aren't autobiographical, how you figure out which is which and what you want to include and what you want to be fiction, uh, where all of those lines are. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction. From episodes of Star Trek, Star Wars, to The Walking Dead, Resident Evil, all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of Marvel or DC. The Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. You'll never look at science fiction the same way again. Welcome 
Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking today with author Brandy Ferner about her new novel, Adult Conversation. Let's get back to that interview. So you've you've been, you know, very honest about your own experiences um, in terms of parenting. So would you say that there's a lot of autobiographical elements in the book or <laughs> did you kind of fictionalize your own experiences? How did that work? Yeah, that's, I did. So there is stuff that is autobiographical. Like I, April to me is me. I just, and there's like, I, I'm trying to think like, what is really different about her and I? Uh, probably nothing. And so that, and the inner, inner dialogue that she had, that's totally things that have gone through my head. The other characters in the book, I took things from my life, you know, so it's like I, I, I pick and choose what I think is most interesting. So the husband character, the Aaron character is not my husband, but there's certain personality and traits and characteristics from my husband that I think are interesting in a story, such as, you know, my husband loves Noam Chomsky and really intellectual podcasts, and he's such an intellectual. And then he also loves The Bachelor. And I just love that mix. And so there's little things like that that I took and I put on certain characters, but they aren't actually people from my life. So it's like a mix. Like I feel April is very much me. And then the other characters are kind of a culmination of all the collective stories I've heard over the years of working with new moms and talking to friends and just being a part of the collective motherhood experience that I could put into that, you know, like the, the mother, the mom, like the grandma character, Marnie, although there's a couple things in there that are totally my mom. My mom writes with a straight edge ruler to make her letters perfect. So that's the thing is that's what I found fun is that I could take some of these things that are really quirky or interesting and then also fictionalize some of the the parts as well. And But it's funny because my mom read it and we had this call afterwards and it was so funny to talk to her about it. And she goes, did this stuff happen to you? She goes, I, you know, I know some of it, like I know some of the overwhelm and that sort of thing, but then she was listing some of the plot points and I, and a couple other people have asked me about those things too. And I've had to say, no, that never happened to me. Like the scene where April is in the pop-up shop. I used to have a clothing line that was exactly like that clothing line, but I never had a pop-up shop. I never had that specific experience. So there's these other, those moments, like I've never gone to Vegas with my therapist. Actually, at that time, I don't know that I had really, I'd seen a therapist once, but I hadn't, it, I hadn't very much. So, so there's a lot of that kind of stuff that had never happened before. <laughs> Talk about, um, dual boundaries and not total holding those very well in terms of June and April's relationship. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, I just realized they're both months. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, off sub subject a little bit, but back yeah. to my own mother, whose name is Marion. And when she started doing daycare, her kids all started calling her Marnie. And so <gasps> I was like, Hey, that's my mom, except she's, nothing like my mom. <laughs> That's hilarious. You know, that it's funny that name. So that name, and it was almost like an homage to my mom, because when I had my son, we were talking to my mom about what she wanted to be called, you know, grandma or nana or whatever. And she goes, I could he call me Marnie? I just love that name. I just have always loved that name. I think it's from a Hitchcock movie. Tippy Hedren was in it. It's just a beautiful name. And I looked at her like, mom, you don't just get to like have some name like just I mean which is kind of funny because like maybe you do maybe I was wrong on that so we would always laugh about how she wanted to be called Marnie and then her name's Barbara so my son called her Baba which is adorable but then like at age two or three he shortened it to Bob which he still her he and my daughter call her today so she wanted something <laughs> beautiful like Marnie and now she's called Bob so I felt like that had to be in the book it had to be Marnie <laughs> Oh my gosh, I have another friend whose children call her mother Bob. No way, is it is it from Barbara or what's the original name? No, she had a cold and she said, <laughs> I'm not your dad, I'm your Bob. <laughs> and her son in, in, insisted on calling her Bob from that day forward and now everyone calls her Bob. Oh my gosh. See, okay, that moment right there is exactly why moms, I think, are so thoughtful because that was like one moment and that shaped right. the rest of, you know, the, the like the name that this kid now calls her. So when you're laying in bed at night with your kid and you are fuming and boiling 
and you're holding back, losing it. It's because this one tiny moment can like affect everything. That is hilarious. That like, I'm sure people were like, no, honey, it's not Bob. And he's just like, no, it is. And that's what it is forever. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it, yes. My, my nieces, my, my first niece was, her name is Sarah as well, but it's mm. S-E-R-A. And she was very confused as to why there were two of us. And so my mom oh. started calling me Sari to differentiate. And then she started calling me Auntie Scary. And then all <laughs> of her friends started calling me Auntie Scary. Um, and then when my third niece came along, she couldn't really say the SK sound. And she started calling me Auntie Gary. And I was like, no, we're, well, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, we, we need a course correct here. I cannot be Gary. <laughs> but it's not. I mean, that's Bob. That's like Bob. When, yeah, I, talk, when yeah. I talk to my son about, you know, well, we're going to go to Bob's this summer. I know that people are like, so you're married, but you guys see this Bob person. Like it's, it just, it's, it's, it always makes me laugh. And I, I feel so bad for my mom. I almost want to like retroactively give her Marnie because she got Bob. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, grandma. Uh, <laughs> so, you, um, this is your first book. Are you yes. wanting to write another one or are you working on another one? Um, so I would love to write the sequel and I actually just about a month ago outlined a sequel. It's a weird thing because this came so organically to me. It wasn't like I was like, I want to write a book about motherhood. What would happen in it? Instead, this idea came to me and so I didn't have to work for it. And it just, when I, when I sat down to write, it was all on the surface, which is why I knew I was meant to write this because it just flowed. I didn't have writer's block ever. That's partially because when you finally pay a babysitter for me, when you finally pay a babysitter, like I'm getting every, every dollar's worth of that money. So I felt like I didn't have the luxury to have writer's block, but I know it doesn't work that way. But for me, I just had so much material there. So it's a little bit nerve wracking to think about doing it again and wonder, will that happen again? Or will this be like pulling teeth? So I sat down with it and I thought, where would these two go? And where do I want them to go? And they're going to have older kids. So things are going to be different. And this story appeared in front of me and I'm super excited to write it. Um, I'm kind of waiting. Uh, what am I waiting for? I, you know what? I don't know. I think I'm waiting for maybe the pandemic to chill out a little bit. Um, I'm also, so there was, I also was, um, I was mentioned in a New York Times, the book was mentioned in a New York Times article back in February. So out of the blue, I had a Hollywood producer contact me about possibly wanting to do a movie of it, which was so exciting. And so long story short, I wrote a screenplay adaptation of the book, which is now currently being shopped around. And thank you, pandemic, for like crushing all my hopes and dreams and like big break, uh, possibly because that industry is so affected by these times, obviously. But so I feel like I've done a lot of writing recently because writing a screenplay was a whole different ball game. And then now as I'm thinking on the sequel, I'm like, maybe I should just chill out for a little bit. So I think I'm kind of in a waiting place, but I have this primed and ready to go. And when, maybe when I can't sleep for a week and maybe when I feel that, that fire again, maybe that's when I start writing. So I don't know, but yeah, it's definitely there and, and ready to be explored and I'm excited about it. Can we please somehow get Snoop Dogg into the movie adaptation? <laughs> you have no idea. I know <laughs> You have no idea how how much I've thought about this and how much I've asked people around. So he is written into the script. So I we we will see if that ends up happening um and if that could be a possibility. But you know some people when they ask me, you know, why did you write this? I'm like, would it be bad to say well to eventually meet Snoop Dogg someday? Like is that that's probably not the answer they're looking for. But if right. that happened, I mean that I feel like that would be sort of like my my life goal. I don't know, that sounds bad, but <laughs> but it is. But it is. It's okay. <laughs> we we have lots of different layers of life goals. Exactly. It's um, an onion. We're just peeling back a layer. It's just a layer. It's fine. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um you've mentioned your podcast podcast. So uh, give us the name and where people can find it if they want to listen. 
Yeah, uh, shockingly, it's called Adult Conversation. <laughs> so uh, you can find it on, you know, on all the places on Apple, Google, Stitcher, all of those different places. So uh, yeah, check me out there. We talk, I, I usually have a guest, although the, in the last one, I talked a lot about writing and I had a bot interview me, which was amazing and funny and all of that. But we talk about all sorts of parenting stuff that I think other people aren't totally talking about. So um, I love it. I do it for no other reason than I just truly love adult conversation. And I happen to be connected with and know a bunch of really interesting people who are also open books. Like the other day, just a couple of days ago, I got connected to a, a gal who was a, a contestant on The Bachelor years ago. And I asked her just out of the blue, like, hey, would you ever want to come on my podcast and I can ask you all the questions I've ever wanted to know, mostly related to like periods and stuff on the show? And, you know, would you be able to be honest with me? And she was like, oh my God, totally. So I got to interview her a couple of days ago, which blew my mind. So I don't know if other people are interested in it. It seems like they are, but I just, I, it's, it's like a passion project of mine. So if you're interested, you can find me at adult conversation podcast. Time for our last break of the podcast. When we come back, we will be doing our ever popular, at least in my own head segment of what are you reading now? So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC book review podcast, and I'll be right back. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or any where you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion to my interview with author Brandy Ferner. Now, uh, as a mom, you probably don't always have time to read books that you want to read, <laughs> but um, when you do, what what what's your what are your go to genres or authors? Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. It's so hard as a mom to read, and also as a writer, mom, I actually feel some like guilt and shame about this, to be honest with you, because I feel like good authors need to also be avid readers. And I'm not an avid reader at this part of my life because I don't, if I want to write, I don't also have time to read. So I, I'm, but I am, I'm currently reading a book, which is, it was like the day my book came out, I finally went, oh my gosh, I think I can read other people's words now. So I'm in the, I'm in the middle of Glennon Doyle's Untamed and I'm loving most of it and just, it's so fun to be a reader again, but I love David Sedaris' stuff. I also love Barbara Kingsolver. Um, yeah, I'm, I, but I do, I'm hoping that as I get older and kids become more self-sufficient and, you know, there's like a thing called retirement that happens at some point that maybe I will get to read all the books I've ever wanted to read. And just, I imagine myself getting older under a blanket in my bed with a cup of tea and books surrounding me. So maybe ask me that question again in like 20 years and maybe I'll have a list that's longer than three, <laughs> three people. <laughs> I'll, I'll put it in my calendar and, and call you up. Yes. You'll be like, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, what are your, what are your kiddos reading right now? Oh gosh, what are they reading right now? Um, they're reading a lot of video games and a lot of iPads. Uh, <laughs> let's see, my son loves to read and he actually begs me to read my book. Um, he's like, it's so sweet. They're so proud of me. And I'm like, I told him, him specifically, you know, you can read it when you're older and when you're a dad. Cause I would want him to have a frame of reference for the experience. Um, you know, so anyway, what is he reading? He's been doing the Hunger Games books, 
which he really loves. And who else? There was, we have a Kindle for him. So I'm, I'm actually sitting in his room and I'm looking around, but a Kindle, like I wouldn't be able to um, see it on the Kindle. What's the recent thing we got him? Um, there's like, he, he likes mystery and he likes action, but he also is in love with, even though he's way past them, but Diary of a Wimpy Kid and Big Nate, he loves humor. So he's definitely my kid. But my daughter's just learning to read. Like we're just at that place. And actually one of her favorite things to read are those good night stories for rebel girls that each page is like some awesome woman who did something really groundbreaking. And I just love how much she eats that up and the conversations that we have about it. I mean, talk about kind of breaking the gender inequality from a, a really foundational place that to me feels like not just reading, but almost, um, you know, something bigger, like some, some really good education. And we've also been reading the Ramona books, the actual books I had when I was a kid and those Yay. are pretty fun too. So that's that's what we've been reading aside from, like I said, constant TV and screens. Right, right. <laughs> and attempting to do homework uh, at home. Oh, yeah. that's its own podcast. Yeah, let's, that in yeah. itself is <laughs> insanity. The definition of insanity, truly. I, I agree. Um, do you have advice for other people who might want to sit down and write a book? Hmm. Gosh, there's so much. There's so many different angles, but I would have to say like my one thing, and I'd really been thinking about this lately because I was thinking, why did I keep going during this? Like this has taken me almost five years to get this into the reader's hands, which by the way is so hard and I'm not patient. So it was like killing me over the years to hear people have stories where they were in the same situation as I was and feeling overwhelmed and like, are they broken? And I'm like, in three years, I'll have this book for you. It was so hard to wait. But I kept wondering, you know, why was I so determined? And why did I have such endurance for this? And then it hit me that I had a message that I felt needed to get out or at least a way of looking at the experience of motherhood that I thought was unique and needed in the world. And I knew there was something important here, but getting that message out was the fire. It was literally the fuel that drove the entire machine when I really look at it from this higher viewpoint, you know, and I'm not so much in the weeds of the, what does it take? So what I would say to aspiring writers is what is that message that you think is so important or story that you think is so important that you are willing to be rejected time after time to try to get that message out there? You know, what is that experience that you've had in your life that you, A, want to write about, something you want to sh shine a light on that other people maybe are not in the same way? Like, what is that thing? Because without the author being excited about whatever the message or the story is, it, it's gonna, it falls flat. So I feel like it's inside people to, inside authors to find out what that thing is. And it doesn't have to be groundbreaking. It's not like you have to, for me, you don't have to write a book that, you know, undoes some huge system or something. I mean, it can be a little, it can be a little thing, but you're so interested about it or passionate about it, or your voice is so different on it or interesting that, that it needs to be out there. So I think that's kind of the first place. And again, I was lucky enough that my story came to me before, like, I never thought to myself, I'm going to be an author. So I, I'm sure there's people out there who are like, I like to write. What would I write my book about? And so I sort of don't know what that experience is like totally. So if people ha have nothing, if they're like, well, I guess I have nothing that I really want to write about is like really going within and thinking, what do I have something to say about? And also, why do other people care? Why should other people care? How might this affect other people? And again, even if it's just entertaining to them, it doesn't have to change their life. But why is this important? And why is your story important? If you have that, like, I feel like you have a great starting point. So that's my, that's my two cents about, about that piece. I mean, there's so many different things. The other thing I would say is read Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott as like your, your number one thing you do. That book is a lifesaver and has talked me off of a ledge so many times as a writer. All right. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Um, do you have a website? And uh, if so, where can people find it? And also where can they possibly interact with you on social media? 
Yeah. So my website is adultconversation.com. So you can find all my things there. And I have a pretty robust Facebook community that's adult conversation as well. And I'm pretty active on there, especially Facebook. I really, of course, love adult conversation. So I interact with people uh, quite a lot. And I'm also on Instagram, but not quite as much. And I'm on Twitter, but man, I, it's, I, Twitter is like kind of an enigma to me. So I'm on there, but not very much. So Facebook is pretty much the place to find me. And then I also have a group called the Adult Conversation Podcast Discussion Group, which is for people who listen to the podcast and want to do deep dive conversations on the things that we talk about. So if people are like me and are interested in that stuff, you know, they can request to join that and that's its own other community as well. All right. Thank you for that. Yeah. We have talked about a lot of different things. Um, But (laughs) is there anything that we have not covered that you would like to bring up at this point, whether it's your podcast or writing or motherhood, anything that we haven't covered? Mm. Gosh, I don't think so. I feel like we've covered a lot of the different things. Um, I mean, I guess the only other thing that I would, that I would say, or that I, I feel is important is I really felt like I wanted to write this book from the trenches of motherhood. And I knew, I knew that if I waited, I mean, A, I couldn't sleep, so I had no choice. It feels almost like a non, I non-consensually wrote this book, like with a gun to my head. But I also feel like had I waited until I was out of the trenches, I might have had a different point of view about things that was a little bit softer maybe a little bit more out of touch. And so it was really important to me to write this while I was still in it. And it was kind of crazy making, right? So when I think about it in that way, I'm like, why did I do that? Because the thing that I needed a break from, I would use my break time to write about the thing I needed a break from, which meant I needed even more of a break from. Like when I think about it in that way, I think that was kind of dumb, Brandy. But also I felt it was necessary. So I don't know, I think... It was also a challenge, you know, to find the time and the headspace to do it. But I feel really happy that what I what came from that is a really accurate and I I think a um like a, a the depiction I think what's I'm my words are escaping me right now but um like a visceral visceral is the word a visceral experience for people who read it because it really was written like right there I was sitting in my daughter's room in the fuzzy green glider writing this thing while life was happening around me so I don't know I I just I felt like that was important to to talk about and the other thing too is if people want to do because I'm <laughs> homebound and a lot of my events got canceled, my in-person events. If anybody out there wants to do this book for their book club, um, I'm I'm going around doing virtual, you know, QA sessions with the author. So people all they they can get in touch with me through my website uh, any way they want. And I'm happy to come show up and answer questions or just hang out with people if they want to do it for a book club read. So that's another thing that I'm offering fun and you're fun so they should do it <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> um well i want to thank you so much brandy for taking the time to talk to me about this book but also motherhood and um just so many different things that we've talked about today i really appreciate it oh thank you so much this was so much fun thank you for reading it i just i love the story about your mom and about how she had six two-year-olds. Like that's the thing that's so funny is that I feel like it is relatable for anybody who's been a mom. It doesn't matter what your age. So I just appreciate you having me on here and, you know, giving me more adult conversation in my life, which I'm in desperate need of these days. I understand. Thank you. Thank you once again to Brandy for not only joining me to talk about her book, but also for making me laugh a lot. I very much appreciated that. And it was, it was much needed this weekend. It's much needed always, but it was definitely appreciated over this past weekend. So thank you, Brandy, for, for chatting with me and putting up with my, um, crazy tangents. I, I'm not usually that tangential, tangent, you know, you know what I'm saying during an interview, but, um, I don't know. You just made me think of so many different stories. And so I'm glad that we were able to chat. 
Thank you as always to you, my listeners. You know I appreciate you oh so much. Um, if you are a fan of this podcast, now I ask you to please uh, give us a nice review, whether that's five star or um, written. I would greatly appreciate it, and that will help me and the GSMC Podcast Network to get this podcast out to more bookworms such as yourselves. Um, so thank you in advance for that. If you are so inclined, please follow us on social media, GSMC Book Review, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I would love to hear from you. What are you reading? What are your thoughts on different books and different authors? And um, what do you think of some of the author interviews that we've been doing? I would love to hear from you. Thank you as always for joining me. I I hope you join me again for the next episode. In the meantime, I hope that your week involves plenty of time for getting lost in a good book. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from Move to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.